So the next part of our journey is to get everyone who desires to grow and develop assimilated and part of our church. So there is an assimilation. You come in, you join. And this is important for your journey, your pathway, uh, your discipleship development, uh, because there are certain levels, stages that we want to continue. So we're doing this virtually, video uh, by YouTube or wherever where you're watching this on social media or replaying this maybe years from now. But you'll see that this is the second video where we allow people to see how they become integrated or uh, involved in the church to grow and develop. We grow in community. So you may be watching this and you may be somewhere isolated, but I want you to know there are a group of people who love you, a group of people that care for you and that will connect with you. And so we are connecting uh, by showing compassion. We'll also have the presence of God that we're going to insinuate, but also understand the principles. And then we're going to evangelize and educate. So these are the principles that we want you to see. So when you come in, uh, first thing, we give you all the contact information for the church. We, you know, we know all that information that's so important. The location where we are, mailing, um, our social media platforms, phone number, email, and all of that. Okay, And that's easy to become accessible and learn about us through any of those platforms. And then we have about four sections here uh, that deal with new members. And it is important you meet, pastor, tell us about yourself, um, the vision of our church. And it's so important you understand the vision of every church, the culture of growth. We're going to highlight that a lot of times here. You'll see that this is the area where you can environment and grow. You're planted and there's good seed and soil where you can grow and develop. Um, questions you may have. What is a good member? We're going to give you seven principles of what a good member is. It's so important. Ways of spiritual growth in your journey. We're going to talk about that. The benefits of membership, which most people don't really understand a lot of time, and there's some very important benefits. How to involve, how to invite people, and to invest uh, for your growth and your development. The list of ministries you'll see, what we believe about tithes and offering, giving, generosity, and how the Lord blesses you. And so we want to show you what we believe and how the Lord has blessed individuals. Um, like we said, the contact information, way to communicate and get in contact with people. Learning the leadership, who are the leaders, and important reminders to help you grow and develop. Then we force a little bit deeper into what we believe, all right, and opportunities to serve. Uh, and definitely prayer. That's so important. So one of the things that I want to highlight, there is a reason for every church in a certain area. And we had 10 reasons for this vicinity. Remember, we're doing this virtually. So there are vicinities that God, you connected with us, with you, and your discipleship journey because we grow in community. Uh, but I want you to see these. And you would attest or agree or identify, and they'd be similar or different from your context. But it's so important to see. There's a shortage of churches. There's a shortage of pastors. Um, transportation to get to church, the racial diversity, uh, what do you feel? What do you feel comfortable? What, what are you trying to learn more about? Um, and the diversity changes in communities, um, divorces, the impact of marriages on families, housing, where you live, where am I living, what stage of my life, affordability or goals or retirement, different things, all right? Um, safety for the young people, so important, uh, away from drugs and crime and bad habits. So that's why the church is so important. We bring proactive, not reactive when they're older, proactive in our ministry. The population growth, some areas are growing, connecting, uh, more communities, more families are being there, uh, especially in our vicinity. And we're going to talk about that in many ways. And then education, education. Uh, there are different levels of education. And so providing resources to help individuals, and the economic development. The poverty level in different regions and vicinities change. And so the church is essential for the, not only the moral and ethical, but the spiritual awareness, the spiritual condition of that community. The church speaks up as an advocate. The church speaks truth. The church supports. The church is a place of love. The church enhances the community as we respect and pray for those in civic and government authority, and the educators, fire department, policemen, uh, ambulance, all those serving in many areas, all right? So let's talk about myself. Um, I'm Pastor Jared Lewis. I love people, love to serve. I believe in prayer. I love the word of God to help people grow. 
And I'm a son of a pastor, that's Jerome Lewis, and my mother, uh, the late supervisor of women, Dr. Edna Pacola Lewis, was a great woman, and I appreciate all that they invested in me so I could be doing this today. Uh, I desire for people to grow and develop in their walks of life. Um, I am educated at Southern Connecticut State University, NIAC, um, uh, university, uh, Theological Seminary, Asbury, and I took some classes, um, I studied on uh, the campus with a theological intensive uh, uh, with uh, Bishop Luther one time at Harvard on the campus, so that was a intensive. So I've had a blend of uh, areas of education which I have afforded and practical application, not only Bible schools, I attended that, um, blessed to be a valedictorian for that, and there's many practical hands-on levels of growth and development, and I think education Leaders are learning, so it's so important that we look at that. Now, my wife, Lady Nick, Nikki uh, Lewis, um, she's a Banks originally. She grew up in the church, uh, grew up in King's Temple in Hempstead, New York. Um, she loves family. She loves to praise God. She's the daughter of the late Eric Banks and the evangelist Karen Banks, great women, woman of God, great man of God, who instilled in her the importance of the church. Uh, she comes from a great historical background church, so she loves the church. She desires to see women healed so that they can tell their story. And that's one thing the Lord has blessed her with. She was educated at Monroe College, uh, Stony Brook University, Old Westbury, and she's a cosmetology license. Um, she has her own business, entrepreneur. Um, so I'm blessed to have favor and that relationship with her in my life. Our belief of how God brought us here the history of our church is that while serving here in Long Island, God directed her, my wife, and I to be sent out. And uh, we surveyed and tried different areas. And Ice of Terrace is one of the areas, so we're not just serving in the vicinity. We're doing this virtually so you can disciple and you have a way of connecting and growing. Remember, this is a series of videos you're going to be watching over time to help your development. And this is number two. And so we released by leadership uh, to... Go forward. Uh, we began in this, this vicinity, this building, October 2022, and the Lord has favored us and blessed us. They have not been all easy times, but we have been faithful and consistent. And we started with about 15 people in attendance, and people have come, people have moved, grown, developed, graduated, retired. We understand that. And so we, 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 we served, and we embraced a lot of families and friends and people coming into this vicinity. And we started uh, doing something with Children's Sunday School collaborating with uh, different ministries to come together, Vacation Bible School. And that was the harness. And many other ways the Lord blessed us. And the Lord blessed us in many ways. And he's still blessing us. Um, this is our chapel where we reside at, but we're virtually connecting with you so you can see. And there's so much. Now, we want to learn more about you. This is just a one-way conversation. We think your development is learning about you uh, because tell us where you're from, your family, uh, your religious background, your current profession, and um, what do you have a passion for? And we love to connect and reach out with you. Your abilities, your spiritual gifts, your talents. It's so important that we begin to look at that. The vision, like we said, is to grow and develop. Every church has a vision, and I think you should grow connected to a church, as I said before. But we share the love of Jesus, we serve with excellence, and we strengthen with fellowship. <coughs> so that's very important. We share the love of Jesus, we serve with excellence, and we strengthen in fellowship. The culture of growth for our church is that every week we invite someone. That's the, the culture. We share our Sunday program. Uh, Blake, hand me the program there. We share our program. Um, and it's very simple. This program becomes uh, a way to invite people. So you leave church. Hey, it's got the address right here. I got the time. It tells the people exactly what's going on. And the upcoming events on the back. And then we tell all the ways we served in the community. We, we actually show statistics and ways to, so we want to make it where people say, hey, this is going on, we're very transparent, nothing surprising, so they can see exactly. And then we involve everyone, all right? So invite each one, reach one, then we evolve. There's participation for everyone. Uh, plenty of areas to serve, we're in the body of Christ, somebody, everybody can do something. And then we invest, we invest our time, our talent, and our treasures. Our time, our talent, and our treasures. More than one hour a week, we try to give at least service. So, oh, I'm busy, I'm inundated. Yes, you can give God something, uh, even if it's sharing on social media, even if it's reading, whatever it may be, your gifts and abilities, and then we give. We're financial givers 
uh, to support the ministry to go forth. Jesus talked about money more than anyone else, if you read scripture. And so we're going to deal with that. And I know people have different beliefs regarding that, but this is how the church operates. It sustains itself to grow and develop and to keep ministering to those in the community. There are a lot of frequent asked questions for the new members. Um, do I fit here, right? We love everyone. We celebrate those that come. We celebrate those who go, right? Uh, your job may have transferred. We celebrate everyone. Um, do I know anyone here? You may be new. You may not. You may have some connection. But we're trying a way to connect and develop and foster relationships. Am I needed? You will learn. Um, whether it be a musical talent or you're able to fix things or your knowledge of administration, anything, you will learn that. What is the advantage of joining? And we're going to talk about the five basic advantages of joining. Number one, publicly people know that you're connected to the church. And so we introduce you to knowledge and are committed to loving you and serving and watching over your soul. Whether it be virtually, you see this, okay? Secondly, the church cares with pastoral care. We pray for you. We personally counsel, give advice and confidentiality and direction and the wisdom of God. And then we teach for your growth and development. That's so important. All I get and get an understanding. And then three, friendships are developed. Number four, there are many opportunities to serve. And number five, family and personal development for ministry at all levels. Something for the children, something for the seniors. All right, we have that accessible. What is required of the members? These sessions are important for your discipleship development. All right, we just want to disciple you and not have you connected to a church. That's not out of the will of God. The will of God is to be connected to the body of Christ, have a leader, and be fostered and developed. And so you introduce, share the beginning steps that we're sharing with you that you learn about our church, all right? And so you can always take time to send questions through our email, inbox us, and things of that nature. Um, accessibility communication is important. Let's talk about what a good member is. A good member is endeavor to exemplify excellence to the best of your ability and share the love of Jesus, serve with excellence, and strengthen one another in fellowship. What do bad members do? Bad members gossip. They force their ideas of their old church on the new church. They don't communicate. They have a lack of integrity. They refuse to attend. Selfish, combative. They don't pray. Constantly fighting. Doesn't take responsibility. Don't have time for God. Right? And so seven characteristics of a good member. So number one, they follow the pastor's leadership. Stay away from people constantly. Uh, go against the pastor. God gives the pastor the wisdom and knowledge to feed your spirit. And yes, he speaks to the leader. Um, learn online or mail in um, when you cannot support. Find ways to support. Have people travel on projects and Terms and say, hey, pastor, we're going to send this to support the church financially, or I want to connect and learn while I'm in this project overseas or something. We're making it accessible for you, all right? Um, you know, different parts of the country, the world, different weather. Scotland is different from New York. So the weather is different in Africa than New York. So these are things that we want you to see. And we're doing this because, remember, YouTube is the new book of the future. And so we're going to place this on here. Secondly, learn your pastors. Support and uphold the arms of the leader. If you need to talk, set an appointment. For example, the church, uh, we have brief settings in fellowship at the church, so we might have to set appropriate times. We may not have deep counseling session right at the church time, all right? Number three, attend regularly these services. There's a blessing in showing up, being faithful, um, sick or events happen, let us know, notify, bereavement, or even joyous occasions when babies are born and dedicate, notify the pastor, something good happened, graduation, right, birthdays, keep the spirit of unity, that's number four, speak the same vision as the leader, very clear, share the love of Jesus, serve with excellence, strengthen in fellowship, that's the leader's vision, we speak the same thing, don't attend unapproved gatherings, secret meetings, be careful who you follow, in your development and your growth. You don't want nobody to lead you to a dead end and cause you to go into a pit and fall, all right? The blind lead the blind, and they both fall in a ditch. That's the, the Bible says, all right? Get along, number five. Get along with people. That's a good member. 
positive smile. Quick to forgive. Quick to forgive. Quick to forgive. Love and kindness, right? Courteous. Being on time. That's a good number. That's getting along with people. Number six, stay in your lane. Everyone can assist, but be mindful of the order. Everyone exists, but there's an order for things. If you cannot volunteer long term, it's okay to say, hey, I can't commit to this. It's all right. But 80% of the work in the church is done by volunteers, and we appreciate their labor and their time. So the culture of our church is very simple. We invite every person, invite someone once a week. Every week we invite somebody. We involve excellence in our service, and then we invest our time, our talents and abilities, at least one hour worship, attend, or viewing some teaching to nurture, minister to your soul. One cup of milk is not going to nurture your body all week. You need food, nutrients, nourishment, minerals, vitamins, okay? Same thing spiritually. And your giving financially impacts the church so that we can operate. So I want you to remember this. The vision is to share the love of Jesus, serve with excellence, right? And to be strengthened in fellowship. You say, I'm watching this virtually. Well, you can connect with us. And we have ways that we can set up Zoom meetings to talk. Accessibility. Just reach out to us. Here's the other part. Principles in the presence of God. We evangelize and share the goodness of Jesus and ed educating individuals. And then we are also taking the time. This is so important. To have compassion while we connect with you. And watch this, viewing this online. We love you. Get ready for part three in your development and discipleship uh, development journey. And we'll see you next time. There's more in God.